Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at MX Linux version 19.2, their first KD release, which is nicknamed Potato Feo or Ugly Duckling. So initially I was thinking, what is this version of KDE going to bring to the table? I mean, it's based on Debian and it's old. It's version 5.14, which misses the LTS releases, which were 5.12 and 5.18, so obviously any security updates are going to have to be backported into here. It's going to be old, but more likely to be stable because Debian are about a mile from the bleeding edge. But already we can see looking at desktop here, we have a conky widget in the right hand side. Well, that's a little bit different. We have a welcome screen. Again, that's a little bit different from your average KDE release. We have a selection of applications pre-installed, but yeah, besides that, anyone can install applications. You can put on whatever you want. Looking at the memory usage on boot up, 495 meg. What's it crept up to now? Well, well, nearly another 100 meg more with a couple of things open. But yes, one key difference we have here is no system D. Great if you don't like system D. Yes, trying to run as user instance, but the system has not been booted with system D. What we have instead is the older sysv init. So I could do sudo service status all, and sure enough, we get some results of programs which are running on sysv init. That's one key difference here compared to anything we're going to get in Ubuntu. Another thing that is not installed is Snap, so you can't install any of the Snap packages from Canonical, although you can install Flatpak packages, but there's nothing pre-installed by default. I'm not too sure about the colorings they've gone for with the terminal there. Pink for the username? Well, wouldn't be my first choice. And looking at some other unique features here, well, we have the MX Tweak. So you can easily change placement of the panel at the bottom of the screen and make it, say, a left-hand panel. It takes a few seconds for this to work. A bit longer than it would be just to drag and drop the panel. I know this sort of thing can be done easy enough with KDE, but then again, if it's your first time using KDE, then perhaps you may not be aware of just how to customize panels or customize the whole desktop. I know if you just wanted to do that, you'd do screen edge, so. <laughs> Um, but yeah, not everyone's going to know that. So that's an interesting thing to see. Got some other simple changes here. So by default, single click was enabled. Well, normally I have to hunt around the settings for that, but no, just untick that value there and yeah, job's done. Password for administrative tasks, user or root. They're changing the behavior of Debian here. So that's nice. That's a little bit different to what we'd normally see. There's a few tools here, Codex Installer, Bash Configuration, don't normally see things like that. So the aliases that are in Bash, interesting. Conky Configurations, a live USB maker. So I could create an ISO file based on my existing live system. Interesting. <laughs> and snapshot it as well. So Yeah, I... I have to say there's some intriguing extras included here. They've gone and done some documentation as well. Frequently asked questions. Is it a rolling distro? No, it is not. I meant to check the pronunciation of this, so I've always called it Anti-X, but is it called Antiques? As in, for older systems? Because I did come across this when I was trying to run Linux on that, um, on that computer from 20 years ago, which I did try Antiques on it. So I've had a bit of use of MX Linux and Antiques over time. So, yeah, it's one I, one I keep in my mind. But do I would I regularly use it as a day-to-day -day thing? I'm not sure I would, but I'm not sure I would dismiss it either. So there's a whole user manual here as well, which was where I noticed that bit about System D. That that's a nice thing to see. Yeah, maybe not everyone's going to sit and read a manual that's nearly a couple of hundred pages long, but these things exist. It's nice to see they've done documentation and not just thrown together a desktop and put a few applications and a bit of theming. They've really made an effort here and tried to produce something a little bit more unique. Popular packages. So for children, what do you, what do you recommend? So you've got applications through different years. All oh, right, okay. So we've got a list of the applications that would be installed. Gcompris and Tux Paint for preschool, secondary. Okay, it's more complex applications. This is something I quite like really, a nice simple package manager. 
And then we have loads of applications in Linux. But if you're coming from a point of view of a new user from Windows, then you're not necessarily going to know all these different free open source applications that are available. And to see something that's a bit more of a simplified view of the applications, so you just say, I want a subject of an application. So let's say I wanted FTP, okay? FileZilla and GFTP, perhaps maybe not the best examples anyway, but um, Media Center. Okay, Codium Plex, Media Converter. Mm. An Office application is pre-installed with LibreOffice. But yeah, I can see the use of these things. So yeah, I'm quite liking what I'm seeing here. And we've not even looked at the regular part of KDE, really. And yeah, we've got quite a few applications pre-installed. I suppose, yeah, games. Not everyone want, Not everyone's going to want games, but they're just the basic KDE games. Nothing too complex there. I uh, got GIMP here for the graphics. Got Firefox for web browser. Multimedia. Well, it's interesting to see Clementine again. <laughs> I've not seen that around for a little while. Not pre installed anyway by default. Oh, yeah, VLC Media Player. <laughs> Classic. The Unique MX Tools. So there's a full list there in the menu. LibreOffice is pre installed in your Office client. Settings are uh, Adblock. I'll come to this in a moment. Uh, but yeah, just finished a look of what we have. Uh, so system, yeah, a few different things here, and utilities, so SMB4K, so we're doing file sharing with Windows clients. Well, they're very obvious on the name there that that would be for file sharing with Windows. Anyway, the uh, that blocking application, so anti-x advert blocker, so it adds things to the slash etc slash host file, which is quite inefficient when you start talking about uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of different domains which inevitably you will need. Because doing it via a host file is very crude compared to doing it via a DNS server, although it is very simple, I will admit. That's why it's not rendering properly on the terminal here. I did change some of the font sizing earlier, whether that's made a difference, because before that it was working okay. Anyway, that's a look at the host file and I'm doing a count of number of lines, so yeah, 20,000 already, and I only enabled one list. So yeah, it does start getting very inefficient very quickly. Going back to the KDE desktop, so there is a widget on the taskbar as well, so the system load. So it shows it as very minimal for me. With an 8-core system, yeah, it's going to be very minimal for most things. Looking at the system settings, so they've, they've made some tweaks here on the theming. So they've got a different icon set and the theming there is, they've called it MX for the desktop theme. Although I was thinking it seems to be very much based on Breeze really, so I don't think it's too unique, but it does the job. And the icon set is Papyrus. A nice selection, looks fine, all very well and presentable. And that is it. So that was a look at MX Linux version 19.2. So I can see this being useful for new users to KDE. It's got a reasonable selection of pre-installed applications. The welcome screen is nice to have, along with all their tools and the tweak application. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.